Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here and welcome to this video. Now this video is part of a series that was put together by my good friend the Nostalgia Mall called Pack Vember. And this is a series of videos. I don't yet have an official Pack Vember playlist but if I can get a hold of one I will try and put it in the description. But Pack Vember, similar to things like Septandy, Dossember, and, and I know there's others, but um, Septandy and Dossember are the only ones I can think of just now. But um, it's very similar to those in that it's a series of videos all about different machines. And of course, I have owned a number of Packard Bell computers myself. In fact, it was around about 10 years ago that, um, well, in fact... At the time of recording this video, it was actually 10 years ago today that I took delivery of my Packard Bell Legend 406 CD. Um, I was very happy to get it, and at the time I just kind of put it up on a bedside, well, a chest of drawers, if I'm honest, and yeah, that's how I used it. Loved it, absolutely loved that machine. Um, stupidly though, I decided to sell it in 2014 when I got a Packard Bell for 86 uh, computer, the Legend Multimedia. It was a very stupid thing for me to have done, and I regret it because, you know, I mean, the 406 CD cost me a lot of money. It, it really did. It cost me a hell of a lot of money. Um, it had a couple of um, issues with it. Um, there was a CD-ROM in the stuck in a floppy drive. When I got it, the CD-ROM drive was shot, and obviously it needed a new CMOS battery, and and then I put some upgrades in it, so memory, hard disk, but uh, but once I'd got all that sorted, boom, it was perfect. It was a fantastic machine. So, anyway, that that was then, and this is now. I don't have any Packard Bell Legends. To my name, I do have some Packard Bell laptops, but um, if you don't have a Packard Bell machine and you'd like to bring home the magic of what one of those might have been like, there is one way you can go down, and that is... M <laughs> so, yes, that has been a dirty word in my vocabulary in times gone by. But when the only thing I had to play about with was DOSBox, which would play, it was DOS compatible rather than being like an emulated PC. It just, I don't know. I just wasn't really doing it for me as much as, as it could have. I mean, DOSBox is very, very, very good. Did I get my wrong? But I much prefer the PCM stroke 86 box way of doing things. Now PCM has discovered something that I discovered last decade that um, would allow you to emulate um, certain computers, um, you know, anything from a 5150 right up to, at the time I think it was uh, Pentiums, uh, Socket 7 Pentiums. And obviously the roster of machines that are supported now by 86 boxes is just phenomenal. Um, you've got the like of uh, even even some socket 370 machines are supported your ve your mileage will vary with this so so just so you know your mileage will vary um, depending on the speed of your computer you could have some issues running some more modern systems but you know with with older systems I was able to run even older systems with um, a Core i5 Ivy Bridge running at 3 gigahertz. So, anyway, the Packard Bell. 86 box supports a number of Packard Bell boards, uh, right up from your, I think, 386s, all the way to the Packard Bell border board, and even newer actually so you could probably build a Packard Bell Club for yourself if you wanted you know if if you're into pain and self-torture and 
sadomasochism or something. But um, no, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be emulating a Packard Bell um, between what um, the Nostalgia Mall would call their golden era, the frog design era from 1994 through... 1997 i say frog design what i mean is the face of technology era now while we did have the face of technology all the way up to 2002 in america that didn't seem to be a thing as much so you know the face of technology started to disappear from american packard bells in you know from 1997 onwards even though we you know kept that for a number of years so which machine shall we emulate well first of all before that, you're going to need to get yourself a copy of 86 box. Now, the last completely stable, stable, we're ready to give it to our uh, granny as a Christmas present version of 86 box seems to be November from November 2019. So if you want to emulate Packard Bells, you're probably going to need something a bit more modern, which means that you are going to need to go into the more experimental territory, which is what I tend to do. So, you can go to github.com forward slash 86 box forward slash 86 box and then you're going to want to scroll down to, um, I think the GitHub repository. No, not that. I find it, sorry about this, I, I do, I'm finding it really difficult actually to, to find. Um, so, we want in the regular builds there we go yeah you want to scroll down go to regular builds and then i mean this is a newer version than even what i've got at the moment but um but you can have a look at what they've done and then all you need to do is you just download all the files and then you can extract them And there we go, we have 86 box. Now, one thing I would recommend um, is you're going to need, first of all, you're going to need ROMs. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to emulate much of anything. I will say that um, the distribution of ROMs, very contentious issue. So I'm not going to show you the you know, the process of downloading ROMs. However, in the spirit of Blue Peter, here are some ROMs I downloaded earlier. Now, this is from an earlier build of uh, 86 box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy or move the ROMs folder over to here. Great. Now we've got an 86 box that can run. So you could uh, make your own 86 box appliance just by double clicking 86 box. And then going to tools and settings and then and just making your virtual machine doing it that way however there is a more graceful way of doing it now and that is by using the 86 box manager now this again can be downloaded um i've actually built my own version so i've just I did a couple of things in it when I had um, I had the files in Visual Studio. I decided to make it purple for no other reason than just because I could. And I also changed CAD so, so it read Control-Alt-Delete so I better knew what that meant. Um, so, But you can download the 86 box manager just by Googling it. And there we go. So, I think um, you can find an actual build of 86 Box Manager, or you can build it yourself, if, uh, if you want. And all you need to do is just copy that into the same directory as 86 Box itself, and then, there you go, you have your own manager. Now, once you have the manager installed, what you'll need to do is you're going to need to go into settings, tell it where 86box actually is. So, best way I find to do this 
is by going into the 86box directory, clicking in the address bar, and then just copying out the path. Alt and tab back to 86box, and then just copy the path into the uh, 86box path, and there you go. So at the moment, it's still saying the older version of 86box, 3.0.0.3249. Whereas if I ex exit out of settings by going to OK and then go back, it's now using 3253. Nice. A virtual machine path, I would recommend you make one. I've put mine on a data drive. So we should be about ready now to build ourselves a Packard Bell. Because we have 86 box, we have the 86 box manager, and we've got ROMs. What you're also going to need, though, is the correct Quick Restore uh, Master CD and Master Boot Floppy and, you know, anything else that you would need if you're going to install yourself a Packard Bell. So... Which Packard Bell shall we build? Now, if you were running PCM, which is now out of support, then the answer would be dead simple. You've got the PB570 board, also known as the Hillary board. Build yourself a 406 CD. It's one of the best Packard Bells that you could get at the time. Or even build yourself a, uh, what we like to call an F822, which is basically an 822, but with the Hillary board in. If you want to know more about a Packard Bell Legend 822 that has the, uh, the Hillary rather than the... Um, PB600 Agora board um, then what you're go going to need to do is go to uh, Elmo 3s channel because he has one but we don't have that board what we do have though is the PB520 board which is a socket 4 board so let's go to the Packard Bell wiki now this wiki I will say that um, it is not actually in a fully working state but it will do everything that we need of it today so let's go there now pbplanet.info and oh look at this i just so happened to have um, a machine that we could build it's almost as if i was planning this video so this is the packard bell legend 60 supreme now this machine came out um probably early 95 or something um actually i might be able to tell you when it came out um oh late 1994 it says so this machine has a 60 megahertz pentium processor sorry about that i got a bit too near to my mic there sorry a bit, a bit enthusiastic um okay 60 megahertz pentium processor eight megs of ram uh, 545 megabyte hard drive, graphics chip 1 megabyte, video memory upgradable to 2 megabytes, probably. I think it's a 5434 in there anywhere, a 5430. Serif's logic. It's one of the newer ones anyway. Um, standard Packer Bell sound card, sound 16A, I um, believe. Um, optical drive, <laughs> doesn't really matter. Um, optical connection. Um, unknown. Some of um, some of the old Packard Bells, they actually used to use the CD-ROM controller on the sound card. Um, but most will support a Tappy, actually, um, because my Legend Multimedia had a PB450 board, which was a Socket uh, 3, and I believe, anyway, and that did support connecting the CD-ROM drive to the IDE channel on the board, which was good. Um... Floppy drives, one 1.44 meg floppy drive, expansion slots unknown, probably a bunch of ISA slots, maybe a couple of PCI ones. Um, operating system, Windows 3.11, Navigator 2.0, format number 555500, case type 4x4 desktop, so for those of you who've seen Billy's videos, kind of looks like a 1510 Supreme. Um... Pre-installed software, 1994 to 1995 bundle. Motherboard. I'm guessing that the 60CD Supreme uses a PB520 board. 
because it's a socket forward, but this is likely conjecture. But I'm sure that... I mean, Packard Bell, they would have a model number. Like the, the 406 CD. You could get it as a 3x3 machine with a Hillary board, which is what mine's had. You could also get it as a 4x4 with a PB600 board. So it's... I'm going to say that PB520 and a 60CD Supreme could happen. Um, what else? Price, if known, unknown. But anyway, we have all the information we need to build this computer in 86 box. So let's get out the virtual screwdriver set and um, get started. Um, first of all, though, um, you're going to be dealing with um, sharp objects like... Um, I don't know, the, the edge of a mouse button. So you're probably going to want to get... Um, if you're the kind of a person who thinks that... Um, if you're the kind of a person who thinks that um, it is perfectly okay to deny climate change, you're going to get want to get a responsible adult to do this for you. Um, also... You need to be nice and alert when building computers, so I would recommend a cup of tea. Good, I'm ready. Now, so what we want to do with 86 Box Manager, damn mind all these VMs, is we want to add a new machine. So I'm just going to quickly, I'm just going to literally click on, whoops, I'm just going to literally click on add, name, Packard Bell Legend 60 CD Supreme Description Virtual PB LG 60 CD Super And we want to configure this virtual machine now. We're not ready to start it. We want to be ready to start it for a wee bit. So now we've got the 86 box settings. So because this is a Pentium 60 megahertz it's a socket for pentium so we need to um go to machine type and go down to socket four um and it will display all the motherboards all the socket for motherboards with the uh, chipset um that they use in square brackets to the left so pb 520r that's what we want with the intel 430 lx chipset now some boards have configuration options including this one. I'm guessing this has onboard memory. And that's what that is. 2 meg or 4 meg. But um, either way, I'm just going to go back to the website, just to see if I can remember how, met, how much uh, RAM the system has. I think it has 8 megs. So there we go. 8 megs of RAM. Display. Um... Does it use an internal controller? Yes, I believe it does, so we'll we'll just use that. Input devices, we want a mouse, so standard PS2 mouse, and we can just go for a two-button mouse. You can select three-button or wheel mouse if you want them, but um, actually with 86 box, if you just emulate a two-button mouse, you can actually click out of the 86 box window um, by just using a scroll wheel. Whereas if you have a wheel mouse, you have to use F8 and F12 to um, release the mouse pointer from the 86 box window. So if you don't need a wheel mouse, go without it. It just makes things easier. And, you know, I'm sure there's a wheel mouse driver out there for Windows 3.1. I definitely know there's three button mouse drivers out there for Windows 3.1. But um, your Packard Bell did not come with a scroll mouse not not your 60 super uh, 60 cd supreme anyway um you're gonna be like actually i got a computer from ebay and i'm gonna put a scroll mouse in telly mouse but um joystick packard bell didn't come with a joystick but i don't see why you shouldn't add one if you want one now, if you're if you're using the like of an Xbox controller, make sure the Xbox controller is switched on and is paired with your computer before starting 86 box. Otherwise, it's just not going to be too happy, as it isn't on my computer. Sound. Now, 
I would say that we use the Aztec Sound Galaxy 16AB Washington. So select that. Um, I think we'll just keep all the settings. Enable OPL. Uh, receive input SB MIDI. Receive input MPU 401. Don't need to worry about that unless you're planning on working with um, a Roland MT32. Use Float32 sound seems to be um, enabled by default, so we'll just leave that. Um, it's quite a lot of sound cards, obviously, if you want to upgrade down the line, then there you go. There's um, for, just forgotten how many sound cards there is on this thing. Um, but that's, that's not a problem. Network, we'll just leave that blank for the moment. Again, if you want to add that later on, we can. Um, port, could add a printer if you wanted. So, why don't we? Let's, uh, let's just add a dot matrix printer there. Got a good deal when I bought it out of Best Buy or what? No, it would have been Sears if it was a Supreme. Yeah, yeah, Sears gave me a good deal. So, yeah, got, um, got an... ESC compatible dot matrix printer. I don't know if that's any good or not, but um, hey ho. Um, hard disk controller. We need to select that. You want to use the internal controller. There we go. Now, for a hard disk, the hard disk size is 545 megabytes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new hard disk image format. Dynamic size of VHD. Now this, if you go for a dynamically expanding disk, it does mean that any space that you're not using will not be used, but it also can become quite fragmented because of the way that uh, the Microsoft file systems are. They like to become fragmented if you're storing this on a hard disk. If you're storing it on an SSD, not really a problem. But um, that's just one of the things that you should probably know. Also, VHD, quite compatible file format. Microsoft supports it, so you can always connect a VHD file to your host Windows operating system and then just do stuff with the image. But um, we want to specify the file name for the hard disk. So what I usually do is I've got my own disks folder and all the hard disks live in here. Packard, Bell, Legend, whoops, Legend 60 CD Supreme dot VHD. And I'm going to, well, can either select one of the predefined sizes, but I'm actually going to put my own size in here, 545. And there we go. You can either do it through cylinders, heads, and sectors. You know, do the hard disk, disk geometry yourself. Or you could literally just type the size in and then 86 box will go away and work out what the geometry of the hard disk would be. Okay, disk image created. Excellent. Um, so you can select that and see where on the board it's connected, what... Um, what kind of interface it's using, ID, um, primary, master. So, floppy drives and CD drives now. By default, your virtual machine will um, want to add two five and a quarter inch, 360 kilobyte drives, because every machine at, um, at its heart is an IBM 5150. No, we don't want that, so we'll just select 3.5 inch 1.44 meg drive and the second drive will just disable it so just got the one drive but it's a high, high density um diskette drive cd rom drives now we want to go for an atapi cd rom that will connect on the primary channel as the slave it's uh, probably one of the best ways to connect CD-ROM drives in older 86 box machines. Now, we can adjust the speed. Now, 
Technically speaking, I reckon we would have to go for a double speed drive for a Legend 60 Supreme. You could do that if you wanted, but I'm just going to go for the default 8 speed just so we can make things quicker for installing stuff. But, you know, if you need something that has a slower CD-ROM drive, 86 box has you covered. And yes, that does come up, especially with some older multimedia titles. So, with everything else, um, magne magneto optical drives, you can add them if you want. You can add a zip drive if you want. We're not going to. And other peripherals. We don't need any uh, memory expansion boards or anything like that. So... There we go, we have a machine. So let's start it up. Now, by default, it's gonna run in this tiny ass window, which is fine if, if that's what you're into. But what I like to do is I like to resize this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specify the dimensions. This, this was a feature that became available in PCM which I was successfully able to lobby to have it put into 86 box. And it was, I, if I remember rightly, it was literally done within a couple of hours of me requesting it. So hats off to 86 box for putting that in at my request. Just makes it easier for me to be able to actually see what I'm doing. There we go. 1280 by 960 that will give us a 4x3 image and everything will scale to 4x3 so it'll be like a real computer monitor. So we're going to go into the BIOS and um, suddenly all these systems are Y2K compatible because this is uh, having no problems with the date November the 5th 2021. It seems that the Packard Bell legend 60 CD Supreme did remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. Anyway, so boot options, A first, then C. Good. Um, most of this stuff we should just be able to keep. <clears throat> now, we need to boot this machine up using a boot floppy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that disc in the drive now so because this machine was made in late 1994 what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the um november 1994 restore cd which um i'll read out the uh, number it is 1702 one at uh, 1702 uh, sorry it's 1702110r3 so now that we have the floppy drive and cd rom drive well floppy disk and cd rom in the virtual drives we can then go ahead and reboot the machine the first time you start one of these 86 box machines you will get odd things said by the bios but that is literally just like taking a brand new motherboard and installing it and then it um and then it'll say things like oh james don't know the time don't know any settings who am i what year is this so this is now saying sorry drive c cannot be accessed um so what i need to do is i actually need to Partition the drive, so I'm going to go to F disk, type F disk at the DOS prompt, create a DOS partition or logical DOS drive. Yep, create a primary DOS partition. Do you wish to use a maximum available space for a primary DOS partition and make the partition active? Why, yes, yes, I do. Insert DOS system diskette into drive A, press any key when ready. So there it goes. Drive C cannot be accessed, that's okay. So format C colon stroke S. 
Whoops. That didn't go as well as I was hoping. Oh no, it's it's worked. Yikes. That is a lot less than, than I expected it to be. I'm going to be honest. I made a... I'm pretty sure I wanted this to be a 500 meg drive. What is this caper? What is this bloody caper? I didn't! I made it bloody 345 meg. Right, okay. <laughs> so we're going to need to do this again. Fit this bloody caper. Fit. Who am I missing 200 megs of space? I don't like us. Packer Bell Legend 60 Supreme. Yes, over right. 545. There we go. So, all this formatting and F disking that we've done, we're just going to have to redo that now. <clears throat> okay. And then I'm going to format the drive, format C, stroke S, to make it bootable. There we go. MS DOS 6. What I am going to do as well, is in 86 box, because you can't use Control alt delete in the same way, because it will just send that through to the host operating system. We can turn right control into left alt. Now this is an option that um, is toggleable because obviously there's going to be some software that will have a specific use case for right control. But for the most part, this actually works. So I can just press control, left control, right control and delete and it will act as control alt delete right this um yikes this this is actually an older diskette this this is not what i needed Give me a moment. Now we're booted up into a version of the Restore diskette that I badly modified in 2011 for Windows 3.1 systems. And because of this, this disk has an Atapi CD-ROM driver, thanks to the Samsung CD and DVD-ROM device driver. And there are still the tools on this diskette needed to restore a Packard Bell. Because we've already partitioned and formatted the hard drive, I think I should just literally be able to type restore and continue. So the format number, as we found out from the wiki, is 555500. 500. And there it goes. So that will now go ahead and reinstall everything as it would have been from the factory. Quite a simple thing. All it really needs to do is just copy some system files to the hard disk to make it bootable and then everything else gets copied as a standard copy command from the CD-ROM. 
according to which format number you're using so the correct drivers become installed. So while this is going on, I would recommend that you go and get yourself a nice hot cup of tea because this will take a wee bit of time. So the restoration has successfully completed. So we're going to go into, we're going to actually boot from the hard drive. Now it is obviously going to, once it's set itself up properly, it will start then looking for a CD-ROM drive on the sound card, which it isn't there. I would hope that in later versions of 86box that um, you can emulate CD-ROM drives that are on the sound card. Excellent, the sound is working. Graphics appear to be working as well. Yep, they Welcome all are. Welcome to Packard Bell's Navigator. So we are in business. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is, while I don't mind Navigator coming up, I much prefer to just start in Windows, so I've went to the options and I'm going to select Microsoft Windows. And because I've made my screen a lot bigger, the mouse is actually very sensitive. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go to the mouse control panel. Luckily, um, the Microsoft mouse driver version 8.20 has been installed on here. So I can turn off mouse acceleration and then just turn this down a wee bit. And while I'm here, I'll make my mouse pointer nice and large and black. And there we go. We're about set up. Now, the CD-ROM drive. Let's see if we can sort that out. Because a mid-90s Packard Bell is nothing if, um, if not with its... Uh, extensive CD CD-ROM library. So, let's get um, let's go into the sys edit program system editor. And this collates all your system files that can be modified, system configuration editor, and um, and if you're a 5-year-old boy in the 90s and you're in this, your parents are not going to be happy with you. Because you could do some real damage to your Windows installation in here if you dark in fit your day in. So, um, MSCD0001. I'm going to change that to MSCD001. Um, Config.sys. Um, drivers. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Um, found it, Sound 16A drivers CD make. Excellent. So I've got rid of that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in a virtual floppy disk, the one that we had. And then what I'm going to do quite quickly is I can go to the file manager. You'll notice the CD-ROM drive is, um, is uh, noticeable by its absence. Cons it's uh, cons conspicuously absent. So I'm going to go to the DOS directory on the C drive. And then I'm going to copy this file, nec underscore ide dot sys. So I'm just going to just drag it. There we go. I want to show you want to copy the selected file to C colon backslash DOS. Yes, I am. That's that copied. Whoops. And now I can go back and eject the floppy disk. And then I'll tab back to the system configuration editor. And there we go. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just pop that there device hi equals c dos n e c underscore id dot s y s slash d m s c d zero zero one 
and we'll double check in autoexec.bat that it knows what driver to look out for and indeed it does now that we've set that up we need to reboot the machine and I believe the um, restore CD is still in the drive what I'm also going to do is I'm going to allow program manager to save setting settings on exit so that you know if there's any groups that I want to appear or that I've been working on they will then appear the next time that I start up Windows rather than it just always uh, minimizing it to the desktop right um so now I can go back to file manager CD ROM drive is there does it work yes it appears to be working And I think um, I think we can do a quick canyon test. It's a wee bit more uh, thin than I'm used to even with this. Where's the, um, where's the percussion? Well, either way, I can always go into Audio Station and see how things play in here. Can't play without a playlist. Would I like to add one? Yep, I'll add all of them. What? I'm a recording. Sounds more like something. So there you go. Uh, what else can we try? Just briefly. Microsoft applications. So we've got Microsoft Works. It says CD required, but actually... Yeah. So that's the thing. We've got Microsoft Money. Um, backup, diskette only. Um, under antivirus, Microsoft Money Info. The Microsoft Works intro CD required. Oh, look, there's Microsoft Money. Whoops. You've got your Packer Bell utilities, including Navigator, Kidspace, Disk Image, so you can create floppy disk images. Microsoft Windows for Work Groups. 3.11, Productivity Pack, Money 3.0, Microsoft Entertainment Pack for Windows, Action 2.5, Sound Card Drivers, Prodigy, Faxworks, Video for Windows 1.1a, Plug and Play Utilities, Cirrus Logic, CLGD5430X Video Drivers, version 1.10C. And it tells you how many disks you need for each individual thing. Um, I kind of like that though. Kind of like that you've got, you can make diskettes for pretty much everything apart from Microsoft Works, perhaps. Doesn't look, um, doesn't look like it'll let you create a set for Microsoft Works. So, I'm hoping you're not needing a copy of Works because you're SOL with that. <laughs> Although it is on the CD-ROM. You can install it from the CD-ROM. If we go to um, we go to the file manager and we go to install on the CD, um, oh wow! Nope, you can't install Microsoft Works from the CD-ROM. <laughs> oh me! Well, I can't fit to tell you with that, Dean. 
But there we go. That is a Packard Bell Legend 60 CD Supreme. All nice and set up and ready to go for all of your retro gaming needs. So, with that, I think I will end this video here. And I'd like to thank you all for joining. Please do join me for my next video. Cheery bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. You could also subscribe to the channel and hit the wee bell icon to be notified when I have published a new video. But until then, please feel free to check out some of my previous videos.